Hello everyone, welcome to the Pro Pokeball Season 5, week number 2. My name is Pro Pokedo, but thank you very much for joining me. Last week we saw some of our coaches got off to a fantastic start with grabbing some Nubits. Well, uh, or Nubits? Wow, grabbing some points. Either way, I guess they are Nubits in a sense. But we are here to see who's going to be trying to pull ahead as every point counts. Let's take a look at the standings to see where everybody stands after just two simple battles they had to do. That is not challenge, the hell? Huh. That's my Twitter, by the way, guys. If you are on Twitter, this is a completely sidetracked thing. If you would like to shout out everybody on your social medias, tell them that the Pro Pokeball is going, go for it. Where is it? There we go. Boop. Got there. Easy. There we go. Last week, we saw the Manchester Benetra, Traverse City Thunderous, and Fortnite Ninjas all take a 2-0 victory over their opponents, whereas Todd Skyrim, Howard, Las Vegas, Golden Lucario's Ice Cold, and I Am Groot all share a slushy in fourth place, with the other three coaches of Sarasota Suicunes, Miami Melodics, and Golden State Greninjas yet to acquire a point to their name. Lunar Cresselia is coming off the bench this week to show themselves in their first match of the Pro Pokeball. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and supporting this, considering that our first matchup of the day is going to be... Manchester Manetric versus I Am Groot, our featured matchup of the week. We are going to open up the betting for you guys. All you got to do is bet on what you think the results are going to be. You can do between 1 and 30,000 new bits and get yourselves in to try and make yourself some quick cash. Nice and easy. How well are you at analyzing? But we are going to get ourselves right into it. Let's take a look into the, the coaches and get right into the action. It will be that Ivan versus Diego matchup. Let's get a little bit of backstory on these two. They are both pro Pokeball former champions. Ivan being part of the uh, Season 2 Championship, Diego being part of the Celebrity Edition Championship, the off-season that we had, both of them showing fantastic domination, although one can say that Diego did do a little bit better when it came down to his supreme domination, whereas Ivan came out with his ingenuity and took quite a bit away from his opponents. In the end, though, I think it's going to be a pretty good match. Both of them can kind of get into each other's heads. I do favor slightly in the ways of I Am Groot, considering that we do have to go look at the amount of years of experience that both of these are known to have. Having said that, though, we did talk about taking away that superior. It does mean we got to see what Groot can do on the Pro Poker podcast, which has been uploaded as of this morning, actually. You can see that there, there would be a fair amount for him to be able to set up that Suicune looking a little tasty. And if Manchester and Benetric lose their walls, I do suspect they're going to have a little bit of problems breaking through the defensive core of I Am Groot. Also interested to see if we're going to be seeing any sticky web action come out of the Galvantula here, considering it can hamper a lot of things that Diego might try and do here. It won't stop necessarily likes the Haunch Crow, but we'll take everything else down a notch and mean stuff like Trachyon trying to come in later and sweep up with the rest of his Swords Dancing sets, or Rock Polish or whatever he decides to use, could become very important. However, I do think the coaches are already ready to go, so... If they are good to go, we'll get right into the action. Where are they? I don't see them. There they are. If you missed any of the action, every week we do archive all of our battles. You can go over to twitch.tv slash propokedoop slash videos slash collections found under the shameless tag. I did talk to Ivan. He is here, so don't worry about it. Make sure you guys take part in the betting. Very straightforward and easy to do. All you do is exclamation bet and the, result, uh, the number that you want. What is it here? The bet... I have to get used to it. The number of what you want, whether you want it to be a 1-1 one -one tie, 2 over I Am Groot, or Manchester Manetric getting that 2-0 tonight, and as well as how many Nubits you want to bet. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday otherwise. Thank you very much for supporting the Pro Pokemon and everything in his community that has to offer it. Let's see what we got here. I'm curious to see how it's going to go. I, we, I do figure... Most times when it comes down to the way that Ivan plays, you do have to worry that he is a very momentum-based player. When he's winning, he really wins. When he's losing, he really loses. So hopefully he can keep a little bit of positivity no matter what the results of Game 1 goes. A little bit of modesty and victory, a little bit of humbleness and defeat, and be able to go from there, learn from his mistakes. It does. He does build all of his Pokemon non-stop, so... At least he's going to have that kind of connection. Not going to be able to use that Kirin Black yet, though. So we'll have to see. Based on what he did last week, the statistics don't help out very much. Not until we get about, I don't know, halfway through the tournament. That's when you really start to see the Pokemon that are shining for that team across the matchups. But we might see some new Pokemon used here. Very excited to get into what's going on and really what we're going to be doing. 
And it looks like we are ready here, so let's get right into the match. The series number one of the night between our future match of the week. Between the two, the, between the two former champions of I Am Groot versus Manchester Manetric. Let's get into it. That's not it. This is it. That's not it either. <gasps> Where did my thing go? Hold on. <gasps> it erased my thing. What? Oh, well, that's kind of silly. Wait, and the betting ended? No, it didn't. I didn't put a timer up. Oh, my God. There's no timer, guys. Okay, we'll get that fixed anyways. You can still get your bets in while you're watching game number one. We're going to close about halfway, but let's take a look at the teams. We do see Manchester Metro on the close side. I am Groot on the far side. So we do see that Galvantula, so we are expecting to see a lot of that Sticky Wave coming through. That Mandibuzz is not going to want to take a Thunder, but it can carry the Defog trying to help out here. We do see that Sand, though. That can help out quite a bit. So, that this could be very interesting, and that is going to be that Suicune. So, if we're taking a look at the side of the Manchester Manetric, don't have much to really break through it. If it starts setting calm mines, you don't, you have to rely on that Mianchao and that Galvantia to start doing the most damage. Once those are removed, I'm pretty sure, unless you hacks it to death, that Suicune is going to be... If it's protected, I mean, you can still Toxic it with the Aloma Mola and stuff like that. So, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how it plays out. It does look like both teams have a game plan is they're going to be choosing their starters very very soon not too sure exactly what we're going to be looking at but I do expect that that Rock in the late game is going to help out quite a bit Rock carrying a rock move it also has, has Accelerock but it's going to be carrying that rock move Mixed with a ground move to try and take out and clean up the rest of the team with the super speed from Sand Rush. That is the synergy that we saw similar to what the Golden State Greninjas were trying to do. But this time we could expect it to see a little more success potentially because it is in the hands of a more competent player as it stands in this season so far. But here we go. It is going to be that Necrozma versus the Depowdon lead. The Sand is pretty much free here. Necrozma not going to do a heck of a lot to this Depowdon. So we should expect to see Stealth Rock set up almost instantly from the side of Sweet D. And for Necrozma, well, we'll have to see what he does. We didn't really see a lot of it out of last week. But with this type of lead, we'll have to see in the end what he's going to be doing. Let's close that betting off. Is there only one person who's betting here, so... Let's see what the results are actually going to be. Now, here's the thing, right? He could be thinking about to do damage where he's going to be trying to go and try and get that rock. So, but it's just going to be an exchange of rocks. So, it will be a more defensive Necrozma. I forgot I can actually do that. But the Photon Geyser is going to come through to a, a fair amount of damage, actually. As Toxic will fly out. This will mean that with the defensive capabilities of the Necrozma, it is bulky enough. So, it can do some things for you if we actually... I don't remember the full stats of Necrozma, but it is a... It is a it's not a pushover, not going to shatter as easily as what you see when it comes down to the likes of, you know, a floating prism. But nonetheless, it is going to be a Z move as the Bloom Doom actually flies up, but it doesn't get the kill. He barely misses it, and this is really not good. He loses Galvantula. You have to question, is that, is that a roll that we did not see? Or is that a roll that rolled low because it did not get the kill? He was looking to get him in a one-shot, so you have to think. Either he missed the damage calc or he low roll on what he was trying to accomplish, but that is no sticky web for him, which means Lycanroc in the late game is going to be okay. Same thing with Terrakion. You don't want to see that if you're Ivan turn 5 in game 1 against Sweetie. So, Blissey is going to come in. Photon Kaiser is going to do next to nothing to this. We could see just easily the soft will come out. Keeps things super safe. It does also threaten with the likes of Seismic Toss and Toxic. So we're going to see most likely a side toss come out here. It is actually just a softball. Keep himself nice and safe. The, the nice thing about Sweet D's team is he's got a lot of defensive switches here. Just kind of come in and tank the hits when he needs it to. Although Mian Xiao is pretty good here. Hippowdon will have to come in and most likely take the hit. But, you know, switching Suicune into a high jump kick is going to hurt. Mandibuzz is not going to like it either. So, although I do think he'll be able to take more than two, which means he can threaten with Brave Bird, which is what you don't want to see threatened. U-turn will come out. As you do confirm, it is Life Orb Mian Xiao. That's going to be a fair amount of damage later with those jump kicks flying right at Pokemon's faces. But what does he switch into? He's lost his Galvantula, which has been an easy answer to Mandibuzz to stop this thing from just going for Defog. But it is going to be a Togekiss coming in. 
Knockoff won't be doing a heck of a lot to this. Brave Bird will do a fair amount, but I do suspect that if you want to get rid of all that extra damage being rack racked up, we could see a defog come out of from either side here, really. Manchester Master most likely looking just to flinch this thing out so it can't get any value. If he does end up getting those flinches, it is going to be problematic. Although Suicune could probably come in pretty safely here and start setting up Calm Minds, or even just putting down pressure because it will most likely have rest in some way to keep itself as fat as the, as the thing is. But Blissey, also a very nice option if he doesn't want to get any types of time. Most likely you'd see Thunder Wave, so if he had Thunder Wave there, would have been great to get on Suicune, actually, because it's not incremental damage, it's just trying to stop it from attacking once in a while and reduce speed, that doesn't matter. Mianxia will come in, we could see a side sauce flying out here, Toxic does come out, so Suicune just making sure that all of the damage is going to stay in some way, sees nothing that can heal Bell, or actually there could be a heal Bell on Togekiss, but the thing is, Togekiss, just like Mandibuzz, has to come in on rocks and take all of that damage. Most likely a powder or just something else. Amanda Buzz coming back in, probably seeing either U-turn or high jump kick coming in. We'll be able to take the hits. Damage while sticking, but it will be hit Poudon instead, who will get the sand up. High jump kick does indeed happen. So between the sand, the toxic, and that life orb, Mianchao's already looking worse for wear, but luckily for him, he does have regenerator. This will work in his favor at the very least. But my question is, what ends up happening from here? Because the Lycanroc does come in, it's got that double speed because of the sand, and there's going to be a lot of damage he's going to have to tank out. I think we saw leftovers on that uh, Hippowdon, right? So, Intimidate is going to come through, Swords Dance is set up though, it's clean to sweet, it's going to do a lot of damage no matter what's going to be trying to come in. The Stone Edge does miss though, it wouldn't be a game with Sweet D until he gets burned and misses! That is not good at all. This Lycan Rock was one of those easy. W it was one of those easy things that would just outspeed and just start doing a bunch of damage. But instead, it is gonna be maimed. Doesn't matter how you make a point, ladies and gentlemen. He's gonna take it because it's Pokemon. What a life we live. That is tragic for I am Groot. As he's gonna have to go for more Swords Dances. Hopefully he knows the damage count, because I don't know if plus three with burn on this Lycanroc will do a bunch. Considering we do have two regenerate pokes, Loma Mola threatening with that Scald. Now, the nice thing for Lycanroc, being a rock type, is it does get a special defense boost. So you don't have to worry about how much damage you can be taking, but at this point, how much do you keep invested in here? I think he's just got to go all in with this Lycanroc. He is indeed going to do it. Scald most likely not going to do a heck of a lot, and it doesn't. So he is at plus five with the burn. This is good, doesn't have the speed anymore, but I mean he's at plus 5, doesn't have that special defense boost either. So if this doesn't kill, Scald will kill, but it might be worth it just to get as much damage on this thing as possible before it switches out with the generator, or even get a kill if he does with the Stone Edge. It's gonna be tight. But at this point, he does end up going for Protect as a Z-Move! He's gonna be used Splintered Storm Shards! We'll do about 25% through that, and that is his major attack, trying to get rid of this good read by Manchester Manetra, just stalling it out a little bit more, making sure the Scald will kill, but also just getting more damage on this if you see anything anything going weird. Didn't go for plus six, it did make sense to go for Rocky and Z just to try and get this thing down, because if you get through this, there is a chance you can just cheese out at least one more kill with potentially Acceleroc on anything else. But the Stone Edge will come through, he tanks it up nice and easy, Aloma Mola, love fish. Is showing a lot of love for Manchester Manectric, but the Suicune will now come in. I wonder if he's going to come in and show off a substitute type of thing. Togekiss will be the answer to that, as it is indeed a substitute answer. I kind of, I can't remember if I called that on it, but I was thinking about substitute on this to stop the likes of Aloma Mola. Obviously, Aloma Mola can't do anything to Suicune behind a sub. So now you do see that sub come mine, and this is not the place you want to be for Manchester Manetri, because he doesn't have anything to break through with this. He needed Galvantula, and now the calm mines are being set up, which is going to make the likes of- Oh, never mind! It was going to make the likes of Air Slash not do much, but he pulls out the offensive Togekiss, as now he knows he has to put the damage down. Plus four comes through, don't know how much this is going to be worth it, considering that the Suicune is faster. He gets a burn, it doesn't matter, but he is going to go for just a break at the plus four. But here's the thing. He's just going to kill it off, and then what's the next thing to come in? It has to take a plus two Scald, because nothing on the team right now is going to kill this Suicune. So damage is going to happen, and it's going to hurt. Protect does come out. It's going to stall out a little bit. That's a lot of damage he's about to take from the recoil. That is not a thing you see on this Pokemon often. But it does confirm there is no rest on Suicune. 
That is a lot of damage. It will be able to sub still after that. That is so defensive for a Crocoon as the Protect will happen. As the U-turn does try, the Mian Shao will die. Won't be able to regenerate. No regeneration in death. As now you have a Suicune with plus two behind this, behind this sub. It, it, it seems to be fast, and I believe... It is still going to be faster. There's speed investment in the Suicune too. Or no, actually, it's more of a defensive. Uh... Arcanine more or less, but here we go. He's gonna go for the protect to stall out more damage He knows that as long as he's stalling this all that toxic that was set up before is gonna be it It is gonna be Necrozma against the world and we did see this ladies and gentlemen It's just gonna be more calm minds this photon geyser might not even break the sub anymore And that is gonna be game. There's nothing Ivan can do anymore There's not enough damage to break the sub. Alola Mola is completely rocked. He actually gets the double for extra tilting power doesn't lose anything though as he still has that substitute to protect him nonetheless and this should put him in range to die and it will be game number one going over to the likes of I am Groot and that's what we kind of saw when when Galvantula died we had to wonder was he going to have anything for the likes of Suicune? Because Suicune is a giant threat. You cannot sleep on what Suicune can do. And really, it's... it's we have, to, we have to go back and take a look. Does he have anything else that he, can, that he can answer with to help out and fight the likes of that Suicune once he loses Galvantula? We saw the damage come in with Mian Shao, but Sweetie making a very nice uh, call... And just saying, well, I can put Protect on it, bait him out, make him take a bunch of damage, and then Scald plus all that damage I got on him before. A very good move for him. So, well played by the likes of Sweetie. But now it comes down to what can we look at and what can Ivan do in game number two. Because it looked okay. He got lucky, though. As we got to remember, he got very lucky with stopping that Lycanroc. That Lycanroc should not have gotten away with... Or should not, it should have gotten away in the sand doing a bunch of damage. So it was already kind of fractured, and Ivan's defensive core was not going to manage it. But with the burn, then we just saw Suicune take over, and it's like, well, what is our next What is our next answer? What does he switch into? What does he do? And honestly, it doesn't look like much. His team is pretty weak to both of these Pokemon. Nidoqueen's not going to take the ground move that's going to come out. I believe it does get Drill Run, if I recall correctly. So... You know, I don't recall movesets correctly, by the way. A lot of these times, they don't go very well. But, uh, it's, uh, it's, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, mm, it's gonna get a little sketchy for him, because if it happens like that again, we see Lycanroc get the same free amount of time it got to set up that Swords Dance, the better. And if his answer is going to be Arcanine, then Ivan has no answer, and it could just be a quick 2-0 if he gets, he gets away with the exact same thing. But things can happen. It is Pokemon. It looks like they're ready to get into game number two. Let's get you right into that. It is going to be the 1-0 for I am Groot thus far. This is why I don't do things on camera because I get lost in all of my things. Will they make it two? Will it be a nice 3-0 for Groot to make it back and catch up for those points that he lost last week? We don't see any changes. So Ivan saying, I had the right answers. I just didn't play it right. That's Mandibuzz through for a tiny bit of a turn. Not too bad, but the Trakion is going to lead off against the Galvantula. Ivan prioritizing that Sticky Web, which could help him a little bit. But here's the other thing too, though. With Trakion in the lead, it equally threatens this Galvantula, and it's not missing anytime soon. So, even close combat wouldn't be too bad here. But you also don't want to risk... I mean, Trakion, if you see Lycanroc and Suicune are going to win it for you, Trakion isn't needed, right? Trakion could just get the damage out, and then he just finishes off with a pout on Lycanroc sweeping. Or Suicune setting up, and now knowing it's got Protect on it, that's when it gets there. And Stone Edge once again, what is up with Diego's team today? He does not want to hit it. This is like next level BM. With him just missing moves that are important, and that's a big deal. He misses it twice! This is not... <laughs> He, clear, he didn't do his rock climbing this week. He's just throwing out a bunch of rocks, hoping they'll hit something. But Wish will come out as the Mana Buzz does make its way in. The Defog is pretty free here as the Toxic will come through. I think that's still worth it, though, for Sweet D, Knowing that his Pokemon can still win this with Lycanroc. Once he gets that speed down, he'll take a little bit of additional damage. He's got the Roost on the Mana Buzz. He has enough Pokemon to switch between as well to keep this Mana Buzz from taking too much Toxic damage. That is also a Scarf Terrakion gamer. Good call. 
There's nothing to get rid of this. The Blissey does come in as the Protect actually comes through. That is an odd choice by Ivan, considering if he was looking for Toxic. I mean, you don't want to risk anyways with the Toxic, but what does that Protect get you outside of just blocking that? Because the Wish was used. And here we go again. The Toxic on this man on this Mian Shao. He's got to be careful. However, I don't think he's going to make the same mistake with I with uh, with iTunes, with U-Turn. As he actually has Sword Stance on his Mian Shao? What? Okay, you gotta be careful though, because the Powdon can carry the likes of Protect, but he was looking to check that, I guess. Don't think it will, but the Earthquake will come out. Oh, gets the Crit on the Galvantula! Retribution for three stone misses in this whole series, and that is again the answer gone for Suicune. <laughs> He's gotta go into Togekiss. And you could just see Suicune come out of here and just do the exact same thing, get behind that sub, but he's got to do another Loma Mola. That's what he's going to do. He's going to put it on the Loma Mola and just make that happen. Or Blissey, once again, makes that switch, takes no damage, and threatens with the Toxic. He can't let his defensive core get Toxic like this again. But now you also have to think, if this was a Sword Stance Mian Shao, right? This is a Sweeper. The rest of his walls don't handle it, so maybe he, Ivan was thinking, this is the uh, idea where I have to take the approach where I need something that will sweep. With Swords Dance, Mian Shao, and all these other defensive Pokemon just need to get my Mian Shao in. And that's probably what he's got to see. We do see the Swords Dance once again. We saw Earthquake, we saw Stealth Rock, and we saw Slack Off. The last move might be Whirlwind on Hippowdon. And it will be a U-turn once again. Mian Shao doing its best Scizor cosplay. As the Togekiss is now going to come in most likely on that Earthquake. Perfect. Nice play by Manchester Manetra. Getting this chip damage down on Hippowdon. The only scary thing is if he doesn't get the flinch here, a Slack Off will come through. And he's going to have to do the Song and Dance again. And by that time, Sweet Team might be able to find a way to pivot into another Pokemon. Although, he's still got Mana Buzz that's pretty healthy in the back, and then he can threaten everything else. But, we do see that Blissey switch in. Well played by Manchester Manetric to say, Hey, remember that Scizor-looking Mian Shao I've got? Or more like Mian Shao looking Scizor. Either way, U-Turn will come out. Doesn't try to go for the Swords Dance this time. It was a nice play by Am Group to throw in the Pokemon that will threaten with a flying move. This is a lot cooler that we're seeing out of this. Does have to be careful. He sends it to Cross, but Knockoff could be on this Mana Buzz or even Foul Play. So, and it will be the foul play. Doesn't actually do a lot, though, as rocks will be set up on the defogger, granted. However, if he does keep this Mandibuzz in, that will be more and more chip damage that he will have to sacrifice before being able to use that roost. So he might get out with maybe 25% HP if he ends up staying in to defog and follow it up with a roost. We do see the defog indeed come out, but we do see the Togekiss coming in. I expect a roost to happen. Unless he gets flinched, then it would be really bad. But actually, I kind of like this. I've been playing on that 60% line non-stop saying send him whatever you want blissey can come in he could go for nasty plot but really i wonder if he's gonna try and double switch in to get that track oh he gets the out in but the trackion is played well played by groot we know that thing is faster anyways but we also know it's scarfed since it outsped that galvantula oh man that grass dmz on that the grass dmz on that galvantula not getting the kill on to pout on was very important. Again, getting that crit on him too, just ending that Galvantula's opportunity to do anything in this series is scary. We could even see Trackion being stacked off here to go for a close combat to maximize damage, but it will be the Arcanine instead making its way in. Intimidate support here it comes. It is just indeed the close combat support. Now, we, we're most likely going to see a, a Will-O-Wisp fly out of this Arcanine. The Powdon is going to come in and check that. But the other thing that he knows is, well, that's okay. If I stay in here, we know that Arcanine can't do anything to me. It might not do enough damage to kill it off. And he's going to get that Slack off going. So here we go. He's going to have his healed wall. This is exactly what Groot wants. Yes, you do have less powerful Earthquakes happening. But... What does that now mean for the Manchester Manetric? They're actually going in. This could be checking, however, for Whirlwind to see what that last move is. It most likely is since we didn't see the Protect on a protect on a predicted high jump kick. Blissey will make its way in. Once again, Toga's doing nothing. You can't get that status on Togekiss, though. Plus two doesn't matter. You don't want to get into that investment trap. But now this also means that you could see Seismitoss flying out, predicting that Mian Shao to make its way in once again. And that'd be a lot of damage. You gotta keep it. Ooh! But the Lycanroc comes in, but Manchester says no! I'm gonna take that risk. He gets the risk and he gets the damage on Lycanroc with the sand down. So this is okay, because that means that Lycanroc will now be outsped by the likes. No, he won't. Wow, this thing's fat. Oh, no. Wow, he actually won on speed? That's insane. But... Splinter Storm Shards is wait not wasted, but it does kill off the Arcanine. That is Rockium Z used on or sorry, Lycanium Z, not Rockium, Lycanium Z. There's a Lycanroc specific one. I knew that. Toxic comes out on the Suicune! This is a big deal. It does not 
have it, but we could see Heal Bell or Aroma or Aromatherapy on the Blissey, and that is going to make the most sense. We see this coming. He misses the Toxic, but it doesn't matter because Heal Bell was coming out anyways. That should have been the opportunity for Ivan to switch and get pressure on this. Because now, what ends up happening is he's going to get Toxic on this, but it has Natural Cure. He misses the Toxic! Groot is getting so much hacks against him right now. That should have been a free exchange of status for him. And now he's just going to miss the, the double Toxic because Mianxiao now comes in. Oh my goodness. If Groot actually loses this match, you have to question what slot machine Sweetie has kicked in at some casino that was enchanted by some witch back in the 40s i don't know man i'm not understanding how much damage why he's just missing very pivotal moments and it's not even like it's it's over because his team is suffering but it's like all these plays he's making make the most sense and as a result he's just missing the opportunity to get stuff done now but here comes the defog but like rock is in he's got three turns of sand no way to really stop him unless we see thunder wave fly out of this toga kiss or Aura Sphere. We could see Aura Sphere, but Stone Edge will be a one-shot on the Togekiss anyways, and it will be faster, so. I didn't know that this thing was faster than the Enchao. Wow. I thought it was slower than that. But a Cross will come in on the Suicune. This isn't good, though, because we saw what happened last time the Suicune got in. Because now, what does this mean? We can figure out it's a defensive Necrozma. But don't set up rocks. Attacking this thing's not going to be good. We could see it get behind a free sub force in that Mian Chao, which means you could just even fire off a Scald, put that damage down on it, right? There's nothing to stay in with while that thing is threatening. Or you could try and scare off the Mian Chao with the Protective. It becomes a Protect Mind Game War. Oh man, this is this is gonna get this is gonna get curious because of the switch into the Krozma. But I mean, you have to think with that Lycanroc being out, Manchester Metric has to be afraid because that Togekiss right now is helping him out against a couple of Pokemon, try and put pressure down on it, maybe even set up the, the his own Nasty's plot and get stuff done. Substitute will come in as the Togekiss makes his way in again. Okay, so we saw the Scar Mines and the Nasty plot. So now. What is going to happen at this particular point? Are they both going to set up? We know how far the Suicune can get. The Aloma is going to make his way in as Combine is used. Why is the Aloma Mola coming in though? I can't touch it. Unless he's going to try and get some kind of wish passing. But now you just give Suicune a free setup. He's going to actually make that double switch back into the Togekiss. This is disastrous for Manchester Manetric. I'm curious. Maybe he thought it wasn't behind a sub and misplay, misclicked it. Something like that. Now this damage is going to be really free on him. Luckily for him, unless he's carrying Roost, he's he's going to be able to break this. Actually, I think we saw, what, 24%? He's not breaking the sub. That's not good news for Manchester. As now his Togus is dead, he has to keep this in. He can't go into a Loma Mola. Or what if he does? If he goes into a Loma Mola, yeah, he was predicting that and goes for Calm Mind, predicting him to maybe switch to Loma Mola, try and Wish Pass it, which would have been by the time that the pass, Wish Pass came down, that Skull would have been doing enough damage to kill off Togekiss. Even with the past wish. But Ivan does make the right play here. Or makes a good call anyways. And breaks that sub. But the sub can come back out. And it's not going to break it. So he's still in the same position. Just 30% less HP on his Togekiss. And he's just going to keep setting up. That's all he's got to do. Because he knows that he's out speeding. And he's just going to blast everything with super powerful skulls. The same thing keeps happening. You see the roost come out. There's the final move. So that's the full moveset on the Togekiss. And you have to wonder if he had stayed in and had even just put down pressure with one more attack than he did with that Aloma Mola switch, what it would have looked like here. But it's getting it's getting dastardly. He is going to try and get himself back up to fuller HP, I guess. I don't know what that actually means. But the combine to plus six. And now the sub is broken, but the sub is free. You have to, you have to see it is plus four nasty plot. So he will go for it. The air slash does get the crit. Ooh, that's some luck that Manchester needs right now. As the Protect will come in, wants to get that tiny little bit more HP. Because he will now, with that Protect, actually gets three more subs out than he would. Or he gets one more sub out than he would have done if he had done it with 69% HP. The Protect is going to come in again. He is just trying to keep himself healthy. Nice play with the Nasty Plot. It's a plus six war. This only means, here comes the Scald. It doesn't get the kill, but the Air Slash will break the sub. If there's any caveat, that sub is broken. Moment one, Air Slash misses. This is disastrous for Ivan. Because as long as he keeps attacking, this thing's not protected. We saw how much that high jump kick did before. And Manchow makes his way in on the sub. I don't know why that's happening. What we could see is potentially just see the U-turn here. The protectors come out. Hopefully he didn't go for that jump kick. He did! Oh, man. 
Maybe he knows he can't do enough damage to break the sub with U-turn, so he had to go for it. And there it is. He doesn't do enough damage. And look at all the HP on his carry to try and stop it. The Necrozma gets soaked. And that's just it. He can't answer it. GG. Groot works their way into it. And 2-0's Ivan. Without having that full control, that, uh... Without being able to force those switches or having anything to stop that Suicune or that Lycanroc, that was pretty much it. He had so many free switches into his defensive Pokemon, and that's all there is to it. I mean, he couldn't do much else. Just a poor matchup for him in general. Oh, I forgot to switch that. Oh, well. Just a poor matchup for him in general. Really, didn't know what more to say about that, so... GG to both of them. I think Ivan made the right plays. He did mix up a couple of his plays there, especially switching into that, uh, uh, into that Aloma Mola when it was already behind the sub because it didn't have rest. So in the end, could have been maybe something could just kept up in terms of pressure and stuff like that. But, you know, I, this is this is what we thought. It was going to be Ivan just ha or, or Diego just wins in that slightly more... In, in that more of those mind games just has the better plan, has the better defensive core at the end of the day, and he's able to take those three points. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to be getting to our second match of the day between the Gold State Grand Ninjas and Traverse City Thunderous. Do not go anywhere. New BRB screen, by the way.
welcome back to the Pro Pokeball Season 5, Week Number 2. We get to talk about our next series of the day, which is going to be the Golden State Greninjas versus the Reverse City Thunderous. Last week we saw World Leader having a little bit of growing pains when it came to his new team. Didn't see, we saw every single Pokemon being used, but there wasn't really much synergy coming along with it. We wanted to see more of a defensive core flying out of the side of the Greninjas, but on the other side, Traverse City taking some fantastic domination and bringing out just a team that seemingly had a fair amount of sub to make that Volcarona work, but it was Scarf Serena that really brought him over the edge when it came to taking down, was it Todd Skyrim Howard? Was it Todd Skyrim Howard? No, it was, it was, wait, it was Miami Melodics. Ha, I remember now. This is why notes are great. But we saw it used in very, in very controlling form. We saw how with this type of aggressive team that Sharking is playing, it is a team that needs to keep going, keep the momentum up. You have to keep advantage. That Scarf Serena definitely kept him in with it because the Nihilego got a little scary for him after a couple of times. And actually a couple of swift sweeping Pokemon. We're going to start doing a number, but it really was a Serena that was keeping him in check. The Diggersby and the Nihilego got nothing done with Queenly Majesty Scarf Power Whip. So we'll have to see what happens today. I think World Leader is going to be coming in with a, a slightly different game plan. I don't... I, I really want to see that better defensive core because he has, similar to what Sweetie is using with the Hippowdon and Lycanroc, he has the Pelipper and Ludicolo. So if he pairs that up with some really good defensive mons, maybe he doesn't do that and he brings an Empoleon Venusaur type of thing again. You could see that this team could shine. But this week, he doesn't have his Cloyster, but he does have his Mega Aerodactyl in the back. And if Mega Aerodactyl was that linchpin, that giant amount of damage that he needed to make it work, then he's got it now. So let's see what he can do when he's taking a when he's been given a different approach when now he has a different offensive Pokemon because he didn't see the Cloyster do anything last week but this week it's not allowed to do anything so put it on the bench it's been banned Aerodactyl comes in we're good to go by the way guys if you want to see a list of the matchups you can do exclamation tourney if you want to see all the bands and everything else you can go over to exclamation teams and this will bring you to the exact same coaching sheet that I'm using and you can keep up with all the statistics battles if you want to go rewatch the replays rewatch the replays duh if you want to go watch the replays as well as go check out the weekly polka pastes and the weekly bands and trades and everything else it's a giant hub for you guys to pay attention to and for you guys to keep up with the action if you're tracking your fantasy league this is the type of stuff you want to look to make educated decisions in future seasons because I like fantasy league I'm going to advertise it more next time, but I'm glad that everybody did take part, and thank you for those of you who are vying to get that Steam gift card at the end of the season for the one who got the most correct. That's very unfortunate, Tim. I hope everybody in the audience is having a great time, whether you're lurking or watching or keeping up with the action. Thank you very much for being here. What do we have to... So what is the conditions here? What are the win conditions for World Leader? The win conditions for World Leader is simply put, shut down the Volcarona, shut down anything that's going to be trying to set up Sweep, stop the Alone Nine Tails. We saw what happens when Alone Nine Tails was stopped, and, and when, that's, when that Aurora Veil wasn't up, damage was happening, but then we also question, well, was it just because of the move sets that Sharking brought that really stopped uh, Jillip from shining last week? But maybe he can come up with a different thing. Uh, he ha does have the interrupt with the hail because if you're... I still think about Lone Ninetales even though it's not the absolute threat. You have to worry about the Volcarona setting up. You have to set about... You have to worry about that Serena. The Alone Muck is banned. So he doesn't have to worry about that thing because that thing would have tanked everything on his team beyond all imagination. So it is going to be curious to see what he does bring out this time. The Alone Muck being replaced with... I suggested a little Ninetales, but he probably has thought of something way better. He might have a different game plan here. For the side of the Traverse City Thunders, keep the aggression going. If you see that World Leader does not bring his good defensive core, you can run right through it and just take him down because we saw how fragile it can be when he just doesn't have the damage on his team, right? He brought a bunch of Pokemon that didn't really do damage. And then he brought a bunch of Pokemon that didn't have the defensive core to work with their damage. So, two fractured teams. Let's see if they consolidate today, right now, as we get into game... Number one, potentially, once I check. <laughs> ah, they're in game number one. Awesome. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's make the switch. Second series of the day. Hey, we saw it. Oh, because it's only from one place. I'm right. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Golden Staker Ninjas on your close side. Traverse City Thunderous on the far side. Let's take a look at the teams. The Aerodactyl is making its appearance. That's a much... I like that defense core. The Glide score with the, with the Venusaur and the Empoleon. And then on that other side, we do see the little Ninetales. Oh, God, I hope he didn't listen to me. But that is that is actually close to a team. Minus the Archaeops. Didn't see the Archaeops coming, but I did suspect that Gyarados would make an appearance this week. Most likely a Mega, but will either have the... Uh, 
the comfort of that Intimidate, or will it go for the Moxie and try and win? You could see you could see Moxie here, because Moxie would do a fair amount of damage between the Waterfall and the Earthquake. It actually wrecks this entire team, so it might be a DD Moxie Gyarados to try and finish off everything. But let's see what the leads are going to be. It is just a straight Aerodactyl into a Rollin' Raichu. Can't risk this thing being Scarfed. Or, no, it's not fast, but you can't risk this thing being Scarfed, because if that Aerodactyl's down, it becomes scary. And that could be exactly why Traversity Thunder's doing this. He also sees that it's going to be basically a free Volt Switch, except on the likes of Gliscor. But he also knows that when Gliscor switches in, well, Little Nine tells us safe, and he has an easy switch in to most likely that Gyarados. Let's see how this one particularly plays out. It is going to be the Mega, though, and he doesn't see the Scarf coming, but the Volt Switch doesn't actually do as much as I thought it would. I thought I would do a lot more, but nonetheless, we do confirm that is a Scarf to Lone Raichu as the Crunch will come in, and that Archeops is already in Defeatist. Doesn't even, maybe predicts the Earthquake or something, but he's brought in, and because we don't see a Citrus Berry, Defeatist is here to stay. Nothing on the side of the Thunderous to heal this thing back up. He's going to have to go for the Roost, and he just ends up exchanging his rocks, so this will just be more of a utility, do damage if I can, Archeops. But the exchange of rocks, I think, will benefit Golden State Greninjas a lot. Considering he does show off more of his moveset, cutting off for Crunch, kind of hide that a bit. But now he does show he is carrying the Iron Head. And that Iron Head is very important when it comes down to taking down an Alone Raichu. I wonder if Shark King will predict the Glide score coming in, because Greninjas Grin cannot lose their Mega Aerodactyl this early. There's no way. It puts too much pressure down with a rock move, puts too much pressure down with the potential coverage that it does ha have to take down the likes of the little Nine Tails. It's most likely carrying Stone Edge to finish off the rest of the Traverse team. What is the move here? We know Volt Switch or the coverage to take on Gliscor is going to happen, but the nice thing is the information is already known that this is a scarfed Alolan Raichu considering it is outspeeding, so. Speed tier is the hardest to remember, honestly. So you have to do tons of research and just know. But it is going to be the Gliscor coming in. It's going to take the risk if he's going to hit by HP Ice. It will be the Volt Switch, though, so this is a nice, easy switch for Greninjas. Free setup with whatever he wants to do with this Gliscor. Could even do a double switch here. Try to going to come in. This is Serena coming in to take an Earthquake, but it's the Defog instead, actually. Exchange of Rocks being removed. Don't know if that actually benefits Greninjas as much as it benefits Traverse, because we know that Hazards on the side of Traverse City Thunderous is disastrous for him. As a U-turn does happen. Maybe he's thinking that he can't do much to it, but the Little Nine Tails does come in for free. As knockoff does happen. Okay. Knockoff happening. This isn't too bad, so... He has to switch because he doesn't want to take a Blizzard, and Empoleon is a perfect answer to the Little Nine Tails. Instead, it's the Trampa. Does he know this thing's weak to ice? Doesn't matter. The Aurora Veil. <gasps> Mother freaking Cloud Nine Puff the magic screw you Alolan Ninetales dragon on earth what a ma <laughs> what a plan now this is dangerous because the funny thing is you usually run blizzard on Alolan Ninetales so you because you have the 100% accuracy but because there's no hail it goes back to its 70% accurate attack does he take the chance and just go for blizzard cuz he can't use a rare veil cuz there's no hail existing Oh my god. <laughs> that's that's amazing. The Moo Blast will fly out, though. At least it's still super effective. As the Flamethrower does happen, it brings it down to the single percentage. He wanted more there. He didn't get it. But the Clutch does mean he can go for another Moon Blast to try and get rid of this thing at the very least. But this will just shut down any Aurora Veil play. And the knockoff, you thought that was one thing. It's like, okay, I was about to say, oh, it's only five turns now instead of eight. Still bad. But to know that this Drampa's looming and shuts it down, that's genius! That's a beautiful choice by World Leader, despite the fact he knows he has to tank super effective hits. That could have- this could have even been either a defensive team, or it could even be holding the likes of an Assault Vest. Oh my goodness. My goodness. We'll have to see what he's going to have to go for here, because now he knows he doesn't have that... He's trying to think, if he stays in and he sees it go down, what's going to happen? The Apollon does make the switch, and this is actually smart, because he can keep it alive. Now, the only problem is, though, this does mean the Aurora Veil can be used before Alone Nine Tails dies, and this could be the easy setup for the Gyarados, knowing it'll be protected for four turns, so I don't know if this is the correct 
offensive play to make. Oh, but he just defogs. He says you're not actually literally getting anything done, and the rain hail is done. I forgot this thing is defog. He is outplaying this Alolan Ninetales in every way. He's just stopped it multiple times. Now the Alolan Raichu has to come in, take a Toxic, and he, he's thinking, well, if Gyarados comes in, I'm just going to stop that thing. You're most likely going to see a Volt Switch fly out here, or again, an HP Ice to go onto that Gliscor. I only assume it's going to bring it. Seeing that World Leader has the likes of a Gliscor to say hi to this thing. The Serena instead comes in, although he could just try and use um, a Psychic Attack. But in the end, we just see the Serena make in as the Protect was used so that Golden State could scout. Might give him a little bit of an idea of what they might try and switch with. But now you have the Serena. You have to be careful. It does carry Stab Power Whip. It also carries, I believe, Jump Kick. So this is going to get a little nasty. Or high jump kick, actually, gets, I just looked it up. It gets high jump kick, potentially. Most likely high jump kick. It's just better than jump kick. So there is literally three... So we saw about three answers. Four, five. There's a ton of answers that are little nine tails. This is important information for Sharking game number two. Because now he knows that he can play... Or that he's going to have to play around that. And depending on how he's going to answer that Trampa... We might have to take a look at what's going to handle that Drampa, but I mean, maybe there's just no handling. It's just getting the hail up at the right time. The other thing is, though, with that gone, yeah, he's going to go into a little Ninetales. I wonder if he's going to see him not go for the attack. Oh, no! Golden State doesn't see it coming. Now the Aurora Veil is okay. You might even see a Moonblast, though. Maybe he makes a double into Drampa, and then the Moonblast flies out. I don't know how deep the Mind Kings can go at this point, because he knows that he is trying to stop... The, the Aurora Veil from happening. So will Sharking read that? Or is he just going to make the safest play knowing there's no rocks up? And like I said, defogging those rocks were better, I think, for the Traverse than for the Greninjas. The Freeze Dry is revealed, and we actually don't see a Mega used. And we'll have to see. That is Bibweed at Raz. If she's here, she'd be proud because she knows that means. But it's just going to be taken down. It's just Hail set up, no Aurora Veil for the defensive walls. Now, having said that... Volcarona could still put some pressure down, switch in, threaten with it, and go for Quiver Dance. But you do have to be worried about... Oh, I mean, it would kill a fire da with Fire Blast. So, if you scare him out, you might be able to do the likes of... It might be able to do the likes of... Hey, I know he's going to not go for Sleep Powder because he'd be afraid. Oh, that's right! He has Mega Aerodactyl! Thank you! I, I'm, thinking of t I'm thinking of Game 1 or, or Week 1 when it was banned. But we don't see an item on this, so what item is it carrying then? Item exists. Okay, so with the exist item that he's using, <laughs> you know, it could be it could be double mega he brought on his team. Based on the damage that he took from freeze dry, maybe a maybe a salt vest. I don't know. I I I don't know these damage calcs really. I need to I need to see what these damage calcs look like. Not used to this sort of thing, but it seems too bulky for it. Like it's I don't know. But he could be bringing two megas. I might not be completely wrong, it's just he can't mega it in this match. So we'll take we'll both take 50-50 on being right. Okay, chat? We'll do that. But the Volcarona does make the most sense here. Fire it threatens with a fire move. Again, depending on the mind games, potentially Golden State Grenada says, hey, I'm staying in in case you go, and I'm gonna go for that sleep powder. Knowing that you might think I'm gonna be afraid and go for I'm gonna go for the quiver instead. So if he tries to stop the quiver, this could be really bad for Shark and considering Mega Aerodactyl could come in on it and it'll stay asleep. He threatens with Stone Edge. If final Stone Edge is his final move, the Inferno instead is gonna make his way in, and it was the Quiver Dance play from the Traverse City. Dangerous, but it made the most sense because he had the upper hand with typing. Oh, man. So, the Hail's only going to be here for two more turns. It is going to be an HP. Whoa! Is that what the... Wow. Okay, that was super effective. HP ground? Most most probably HP ground. That does get the one shot on the Infernape, though. Maybe didn't see that coming. Maybe just thinking about Bug Buzz Fire Blast, but we do confirm a hidden power. Could be... No, HP Rock wouldn't be super effective because of the fighting type, so... It has to be ground or water or flying or something like that. We'll have to see what it, what it ends up using. He is going to go into here, seeing that you'd have to go for Fire Blast. What does he threaten with, though, if he's going into this? He can go for Earthquake, but Earthquake's not going to kill Volcarona. And he does go for the HP. What? It's HP Water! Oh my god, he's actually wa running Rain Corona! <laughs> That's got to be HP Water. What else is super effective like that? That's got to be Water. Unbelievable! Okay, well, 
That's a lot of information for both of them to take in. Fire Blast is not going to do a lot, but the burn does enough. As the Toxic is going to fly out, probably the best thing he can do right now. But, you know, Volcarona might get everything done by the time the Toxic actually becomes significant in terms of damage, so... Let's see what happens. He ends up going, trying to go for the double protect, trying to stack up that damage, but he ends up just seeing a second quiver happen in his face. Makes the most sense, knowing that protect is on the move set. Now it comes down to these last three. I think Volcarona just finishes it off before anything happens. The speed's too much, but the ideas were right. But in the end, you were worried about the setup sweep. He's gonna have to hope for a miss or something. He's gotta hope for the miss and then Golden Sacred Ninjas go for so. Oh, he's got Protect on it. Never mind. So the Bug Buzz does come out. There is no missing when it comes to Bug Buzz. Now, that does mean, though, with that Protect, Volcarona is doomed to die and take one for one. And it's Mega Aerodactyl versus the world. The problem is, though, he's gonna go into Trampa instead, though? He's not gonna be able to take that Bug Buzz. And he ends up sacking that off instead. So, what does the Venusaur do for him? I guess it's better against the Serena. He has something that can also resist the Volt Switch. But the problem is. Venusaur's not looking good right now, and this thing carries a Psychic move, so he's gonna go in, he's got it, but I mean, Psychic just makes sense here. It's Scarf, so it's gonna get a Psychic hit off of both Pokemon, and that might even just be game because they're not the best when it comes to taking hits, especially when it's super effective against this bulky Venusaur of whatever typing it, whatever item it's actually using. It's a good play, but I think Traverse still had enough in the tank to make this car go over and take the first game off of the Golden State. It was looking good for him, though. You gotta be honest. Like, Golden State brought a lot of great plans, and I don't think it's necessarily over for him. It's just we have to see in game number two if he can make better plays to keep up that pressure and stop the Traverse City from taking this type of advantage. I think the Volcarona got it at the right time. It got enough done to let the rest of the team kind of clean up. We didn't even see the Gyarados yet. But by all means, Golden State brought a really good team this week. I like what he did. And you definitely saw Sharking on the ropes. The Psychic is going to take out the Venusaur. And it's Scarf the Lone Raichu versus the Aerodactyl that needs to win it all. How much damage can he take? Can he take it? Does he even need to? The answer is no. He's got a Pokemon easy to switch in with. He can go for High Jump Kick or Power Whip on the Serena if it's Scarf or whatever it is. But the nonetheless, he's still got Thunderbolt in the back. So that will be GG going over. He misses the Power Whip. Oh, and shows he's faster. Shows he's faster, but it's not going to matter. He does get the kill with that defense drop. But Scarfalo and Raichu comes in, says, I have an electric move, and that's going to be my game. GG, game one. Going over to the Reverse City Thunderous. That was a game. I liked it. Good to, good preparation on both ends, honestly. They... they they had the right they have the right ideas for each other, and I think that's what's gonna make it the most interesting coming into game number two. Because the preparations and the things that were working and weren't working were all around mind games and getting getting your advantage. We saw, hey, you're gonna try and take momentum. Let me just shut down all momentum you could potentially take. And in and really, like, how much more can you ask from the Golden State? That's a much better showing from week one, considering that we saw that the team was kind of fractured. And he says, okay, well, let's go all out, stop that specific strategy, and see how that works. And now the types of adjustments that might be made can help out World Leader quite a bit. So what knowledge did we gain? That's a Scarf, a scarf to Roll and Raichu. Venusaur is on the team with Aerodactyl, which could mean it's either a flexible Mega, or it's going to be something like... Because it didn't take a lot of damage, but I also realized it didn't use Blizzard, it used Freeze Dry. So Freeze Dry did a lot of damage for being Freeze Dry. So I don't think it's Salt Vest either. But that is HP... That's got to be HP Water. I can't think of... If it hit Gliscor and Volcarona, or and Infernape for, for super effective, the only common weakness they both have is Water. So that was prepared potentially to use the rain to his own advantage, or just carries the coverage of the Pokemon he knows he needs to kill off. So, knowing that, that is a smart play by Shark King. So what do you do answering that? I think the Drampa is phenomenal, bar the fact that it's going to be taking a lot of damage. So in the end, we're going to have to look at what Drampa's moveset is, and what it's carrying, because that will determine whether or not he could have done something a little bit stronger to try, try and manage it. But... What type of answers can he still have? He can still whip out the Pelipper Ludicolo to try and 
get rid of that Volcarona, and considering that he can still switch in Pelipper to shut down. But he did see Freeze Dry, though, so Freeze Dry is for the answer to the rain, and that will be quad super effective, not only against the Pelipper, but also the Ludicolo, because it takes water and makes it super effective against water, and because there's grass, it's quad super effectiveness. So that's double quad super effective with the nice play from Freeze Dry to stop the Greninjas from trying to set up and win with rain. So there's a lot of great planning here. There's, there's a... There's too much to actually look at and just break down in a single five minute session. And with my one simple 13 ELO, 1300 ELO average brain, 1300 ELO a year ago brain. But the point being, I mean, this is good. And Archeops got what it needed to get done. But I mean, he stood it and we know how much damage he now takes from Volt Switch, right? Volt Switch is a 56% damage on that on that Mega Aerodactyl. So if he doesn't have anything to stop that alone Raichu, he's gonna have some problems. However, I think he had all the right pieces what can he do differently? Just either play it out a little bit better, the Flygon, depending on what the build of Flygon could do something. But I think what he brought makes the most sense. We'll have to examine that Venusaur later because... Like, I mean, it, it makes sense on the defensive side. I think it's going to come down to execution and what these two can bring in terms of trying to get that advantage in the end. That was a really, really solid match. That was super enjoyable to watch. That's the stuff I love seeing too, right? You just go, oh yeah, Shark Kick's too easy. Here we go. Yeah, free my air. No, 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 no. He's not. He's like World Leader brings out that ingenuity, but also brings out a, a a better game plan. And we saw this last season too, right? When he was in season four, yeah, first few weeks didn't look that great for World Leader, but the man is not a poor player. He's played Pokemon. He understands the metagame. Plays VGCs, but he's even if he plays just VGC, he has an understanding of the capabilities of his Pokemon. And those types of strategies, like Cloud9, exist in VGC as well. He just has to play it differently. And the fact that he's using the strengths of his draft and the strengths of his Pokemon makes it good wonders for him. It makes you really think, well, you could use that against Sweet D as well to try and shut down their sand instead of having to rely on Pelipper to change up the weather. There's these types of situations where these Pokemon are like, okay, well, it's got to stop in a little Ninetales. It's got two stab super effective moves against me. But then there's also the worry of, well, does that look the same against other opponents? And can he do something better? Maybe next time it's more of a, let's figure out a better time for... What's it called? Maybe we could figure out something better when it comes to maybe in, uh, a uh, EV investment. Now, we do have to do a quick calculation here just to show you guys how close that could have been. I believe that alone nine tails at 78%, I believe. Flamethrower from Drampa to 77 to 91%. So if that thing was actually sitting at 78%, not only did he low the rollist, he missed an incredibly crucial kill that would have given Drampa all value. That's why I think he's got the most valuable comp that he could bring. And it makes the most sense, and he's playing it out well. So, why not just leave him with that? He did indeed low the rollist. It was 78%. So, makes the most sense. We saw it similar. He didn't even do the damage calc with Galvantula against the Powdon. But you really got to question if it's going to be the days of misses and low rolls, what more do we have? See? The timer keeps me on time. I just don't keep... Don't just keep rambling and killing my voice. I have my tea right here. Gonna get more later. Game number two, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta see this thing in action. Because I'm super, super, super looking forward to it. Here we go. They're not in game yet. Ah! Five minutes left, boys. Gotta get into the game. Let's go. Where'd he go? See his name still in here? Oh. All right. It's time. Game. Number two. That is not the right place. We are not being right back. We're getting right into the action. That's the... Oh. Doesn't matter. It's okay. Here we go, ladies. Oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> Nonetheless, game number two. The same comps come out, except not really, because the Pelipper is coming in for Venusaur. That might confirm it's a second Mega then. But that will be the Mega Aerodactyl being used. Let's see what this Pelipper brings up. That's another answer to the Alolan Ninetales. He might be focusing too hard on it, but if he knows the way that that's how he needs to win, then let him do it, right? It might it might end up paying off in the end. It did put Sharking a bit on ice.
What's going to be different this time? What are the different leads? Now the Pelipper's in, that is a different Pokemon being used, which means there are different implications of what you could be seeing used right away. You might see, you're not going to see Alone Ninetales because the threat of the Aerodactyl leading again is the same, but Alone Raichu still feels pretty free to lead here. Instead, it could probably go for Psychic instead of Volt Switch right away, but you don't want to risk it against the Glide Score. So I think he's still good. Check Twitch chat, what do you mean? Oh! Pass the music. You brought the wrong team? Okay, make your Pokemon switch, it's fine. We didn't start yet. You gotta remember the five minutes were up, so if you mess it up... We'll give you a grace this time, because nothing... If the if the battle had started, you would be stuck with it, but... If it's just a Pokemon switch and not a moveset switch, I'll allow it. No big deal. No biggie. I trust, I trust. No big deal here. We have all the damage calcs in the moveset, so there's gonna be no cheating. I trust. Eh, happens. We also know that Showdown is not the greatest program in the universe, so... Things happen. <laughs> yeah, that does beg the question. What was he bringing in response? Because he does see the Pelipper, right? So the Pel... I mean, he saw the other team. So... What's different about... Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't get rid of Twitch chat in exchange for like a 50-pixel 50, 50 battle here. Hold on. <laughs> I'm clicking wrong buttons. One second. Okay, sacrifice this. It didn't show that he forfeited either. That's kind of weird. All right, let's try this again. Hold on. Switch sides. Well, I think Anish is a psychic because we do actually see a Rhyperior fly in. So it is going to be that Rhyperior making its way in. Not that it helps him. He got rid of Archaeops and put in Rhyperior instead. So what does that help him with? It might be a Pokemon that can take a hit and give more damage back. But it's not going to help him when it comes against the likes of the Pelipper. But we'll see. Let's see what this does differently. Let's let's see how both of these guys make it. That single switch is saying, I want the better defensive core going. It is just going to be a, Ry a Rhyperior leading off against Gliscor. So Gliscor can't do much just to get Toxic it. But at the same time, it might just be a rock exchange here. Because, like, neither of them are going to really do much to each other. Unless Ice Punch is on Rhyperior, which I don't think it is. It does that fire punch, though, so one has to question. The knockoff does happen. We do see the Shuka. Ooh, Shuka Berry. Okay. So Shuka Berry was there to take that earthquake a little bit better, but I don't think that's really worth it for him. The ice punch is actually existent on this thing? Unbelievable. Nonetheless, it is going to get that damage on the Gliscar. You One has to think when I called that. You might want to double check your play, because sometimes I do get the move sets right, many times I get them wrong. But when that weird move comes out, we saw it against Pharisee last week. Here we go, Toxic on the Alolan Ninetales. The Defog does exist on the Empoleon, though, so if we do see anything flying out, it will be Freeze Dry, which will be neutral. But if we see Aurora Veil, he knows Defog is going to get rid of it, so damage on the Alolan Ninetales, not going to be the greatest. Not gonna, it's, not, it's just going to be taking more, more Toxic damage for no real reason. Weird. It shows. Huh? Wait a minute. Keep going. I just need to. Ch I just need to double check something because something's not right with my damage calcs. This is saying. Hmm. Gold Sacred Ninjas and TC Thunders are both thinking out their moves right now. Does this not read certain items? Free strike will happen. That does nothing, though. It's a flash. Oh, my God. There's answer number eight for the Alolan <laughs> Ninetales. Flash cannon. Definitely not a common move found on Empoleon. It does exist. 
and it just says, okay, now I really don't need to deal with Aurora Veil. Oh my god. The most hate for the cutest of Alolan Pokemon, arguably. But the Earthquake is going to come out. World Leader is looking to stall out more of that hail. It's a good play by him. He's not losing much. He does get the damage because that Rhyperior can't be healing up enough. That's going to be a thing. It might see that it might maybe be a little bit too mind-gamed here, but nonetheless, now he has to get in. It's not like it was impossible last time we didn't have Aurora Veil, but the Toxic does miss. That is tragic as Rock Blast comes in predicting the Pelipper to try and maybe manage more of that hail damage, which was a good play of both of them, but unfortunately, you want to see Golden State Greninja's get the capitalization on that prediction, but doesn't end up coming out with it at the end of the day. But then again, if he's also carrying... Uh, he's carrying Knockoff as his last move, right? So he doesn't actually have Scald, so it's not the worst. So that Toxic was kind of important for him to even get. If he's going to stay in, he needed to get that. Unless Pelber now has to come in, but, you know, seeing that Traverse City was seeing that coming... Oh my god, my head. <laughs> Everybody's thinking one turn ahead, but can't get much more done here. So the Earthquake does fly out. Again, Golden Sacred Ninja's making a fantastic play. Utilizing that Protect to get the, the hail out of here. Does do it, the Earthquake does fire off. TC noticing that even if he goes for Protect, there's not much loss. Even the Flash Cannon could have happened. At this point, the Flash Cannon would have done more work if he had gotten that Prediction down. Because two of those against Solid Rock should have still did enough, in my opinion. Maybe not, but it'll still get the same amount and the same effect you're getting it done with the likes of the Rhyperior. So now the Infernape can come in. This might, the, I'm pretty sure that chip damage has brought it into range to die to close combat. Does he have something to switch into it? Eh, if it's close combat. Ooh, never mind. The Z-move is used. That's all a pummeling used on the Rhyperior. But it doesn't even kill. Wow. And that Rock Blast is going to hit three. It doesn't get the kill on the Rhyperior. But man, that took so much damage. Is that like max defense? The Mach Punch comes out. Just not wanting to get that close combat special or defense drop. But nonetheless, he does reveal he has priority. That's kind of important to note. And it's fight hitting Z with that mock punch. So he did have that in the back, in the back thing. He's just gonna let his Infernape die, says it's gotten enough work done. That is a scarfed Serena once again. Unless he went for something that's negative priority, which I don't think exists. He's got his two Scarfers again, Alolan Ra Raichu and Serena. Seems to be making good use of this double Scarf because it just puts down a lot of revenge killing pressure once he tries to get a sweep. So what he's doing right now is he's trying to get Aurora Veil up, keep his Scarfer safe or his setup safe. So he's got two flexible Pokemon here. He's got Volt Turn between the Serena and the Alolan Raichu. Does Serena get U-Turn? Yes, it does. Okay. He's got the Volt turning there, and then he can just try and get his setup supers in all while under that protection. But without the protection, now he's just got to play it right, use the right Pokemon to take these hits. He does see the Power Whip. This will be resisted. He has to be careful about Hurricane. He's going to go for it. He lives. The Hurricane comes out. That's one Serena gone to Kansas, as that is more Pokemon falling. Four to three. Golden State Greninja is up. Doesn't mean they're done, though. Because they still have to handle this Gyarados. So this Gyarados has as much sweeping pressure as anything else. He can go for the DD here feeling safe. If he does get burned by Scald, it would be dangerous. He's probably in the Gyarados' best interest to kill this Pelipper off first. He just goes for the DD. If the burn comes out, ooh, the Roost instead. Not even trying to get the burn. This is dangerous now, though. Now he's got the speed, he's got the damage, and he can just finish off everything else. Depending on his movesets, depending on what he's carrying, and depending on what that Dramp is carrying, too. Double DD, this is getting bad. Hurricane flies through. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Never mind. Doesn't need to go for the burn. He just says, hey, I can do damage. But can he live the hits to get this thing after it's done playing around with it? Here it comes. Oh, it's a Z-move instead. Supersonic Psy Strike. Flyinium Z. That does confirm bounce on the Gyarados. So it's bounce DD. Waterfall and potentially Crunch or Earthquake. I would think Earthquake in this particular situation if he's not going to be Mega-ing. Z crystals and same moves and items everywhere. Holy cow. What is the play now? He has to be able to take a plus two hit. And that's the scary part. So now he has to hope that Drampa can come in, take the hit, and has thunder or something. We saw thunder last time, but I think he might even switch out the Gyarados. So he can kind of see, kind of set up this thing again. He's just going for the bounce as the Draco flies. It doesn't do it. Will a plus two bounce kill it? Actually, if he had the likes of Thunder, that would have been death because that hits through bounce. So not carrying the Thunder, I think that might just be game. He can't take it. It's over. The 2-0. 
going to Traverse City Thunderous. I made fun of Thunder, and I shouldn't have. Because Thunder would have been the game most likely right there. Actually, not the game right there, but it would have been another threat down. And what we thought would happen between behind Aurora Veil just happened straight in World Leader's face instead. But you know what? Despite the results, the games were beautiful. That was a fantastic showing from the side of the Golden State Greninjas. They made excellent work of what they were going to draft and bring for each other. And, you know, in the end, it just comes down to everybody. Had, they both had very different moves to try and handle each other specifically. What did it come down to? It just came down to the way that Traverse City Thunders win. Step one, get the pivots, get the right sweepers in. Step two, set up and sweep. And that's just going to go his way. We're going to go to another break. When we come back, the third match of the day will be the Sarasota Suicudes versus the Miami Milotics. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that browser, as they say on eSports. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back to the Pro Pokemon Season 5, Week Number 2. We're getting to the third match of the day, which is going to be between Sarasota Suicunes and the Miami Milotics. Both of them had the sunset on them last week with zero points, but one of them has to walk out with a single point here today at the very least. Or, well, maybe one of them's gonna, one of them at least is going to be going home with points. Maybe they both go home with points. We'll have to see in the end. Nonetheless... Let's take a look at the move sets. We did say on the podcast, or I said on the podcast because Gamble wasn't there with me for, you know, reasons that he could say himself if he wants to. But either way, what I basically saw, we did see this, we didn't talk about the trade, and we didn't really uh, mention it because I actually forgot to register it pre pro poker podcast recording. So let's talk about it. We did see a trade of Darmanitan out to bring Entei onto the team. Now, to remind everybody about how trades work, because of this trade, Entei can no longer leave the Miami Melodics team, and Darmanitan can never come back onto Miami Melodics team. That's the way the trades work. Any Pokemon that leave or enter can no longer go back or off that team again. So, what does Entei do from over Darmanitan? The main thing that I was thinking about is they pretty much cover similar roles, minus the fact that you get Sacred Fire instead of Flare Blitz, which is Shreer Force on the side of Darmanitan. You get access to Extreme Speed on, on Entei, so maybe looking for a little bit more priority. The, the stats are slightly different as well. Maybe he just wants to taunt Sarasota Suicunes and say it's the Suicunes versus the Miami Entei's. Who knows? Nonetheless, he does bring Entei onto his team. Glad to see it. Kind of found it weird that he switched, like, because Darmanitan last week would have done really well from Didn't build it, though. So it was kind of a bit bizarre, but... Maybe he's got a better plan here and wanted to see some more action from Entei. Entei usually runs Choice Band or just something offensive because it puts so much damage down with its Stab Sacred Fire. But we did alert, we did allude to there's going to be a lot of things here that Sarasota Suicunes can use to take on the Pokemon that would give him problems. But playing it wrong could cost him quite a bit because now you have, we saw how much the Nihilego could possibly do. Diggers B plus Entei now carrying that double priority could do a fair amount of damage as well. There's just a lot of Stab that will kind of wreck and... That Weavile is banned this week, so not a lot of cleanup, but maybe that's why we see the Extreme Speed Entei come in. Who knows? Sarasota Suicune has lost nothing. They could do whatever they want here, and, which means that, you know, Hoopa Unbound is back onto the team for week two. Kind of terrifying. Like I said, Hoopa Unbound can either run that Trick Room set or it can run Scarf. It can do a bunch of things. It carries a lot of uh, good stats offensively on both the physical and the special side. Slightly higher in the physical, but... But, is it slightly higher than the physical? Either way. We're going to have some, we're going to have to see if that Hoopa Unbound does make its appearance because I'm excited. I want to see it. But, Tornado's Hoopa Unbound looking pretty good against the Miami Melodics. Pick of the litter. We'll see what he does with that Heatran this week as well. He does have the Celatran, and even though it doesn't mean that it should be anything he should be tooting because he showed it last week and it just became a giant bust when he ended up running he uh, Magma Storm, missing it a bunch, and it didn't do anything for him. But even then, it wasn't going to do anything for him before. Does he have better movesets, or will he be able to bring a team that's going to be able to take the onslaught of the Miami Melodics attacks first and foremost? They are ready to jump into the game. Let's let them battle. Series number three of the week. Between the Miami Melodics and the Sarasota Suicunes. Good luck, gentlemen! Let's get into it. Here we go! We've got Sarasota Suicunes on the close side, Miami Melodics on the far side. Let's take a quick look at that team. The Hoop Unbound warms my heart as I see it come out of the team. We also knew that Heatran with that Celebi... And the heat, and there you go, there's that Firewater Grass Corn. The Electro's coming in just being that good. What? You didn't ban Salamence. When did you ban Salamence? Oh my god. He did ban Salamence. Look at that. He did ban Salamence. Oh, 